everyone, thanks for watching. Welcome to Mission Beach. It's glorious here and I'm almost at the end of a 16 day camper van trip up the east coast of Australia from Brisbane all the way up to Cairns. It's a long way and it's my very first time. A complete novice, never done it before. I've got to say, it's brilliant. Going to sleep to the stars and the sounds of the lapping waves and waking up to the early morning light is fantastic. It's very free and liberating. You can literally be pretty much wherever you want as long as you're not annoying anybody. And it's such a wonderful contrast to city life and work and all of those kinds of things. Anyway, as a complete novice, um, there are a bunch of things that have made van life for a total beginner so much nicer. I wish I'd known about them all before, but these are the things that I picked up along the way that have just made it all nice and smooth and comfortable and easy. So if you're thinking of doing the same thing, firstly, I can't recommend it enough, go ahead. But secondly, if you haven't done it before and you don't know about these things, then these are my top 20 things that are gonna make your trip a lot better. First group of things are things that I've found to be priceless to have in and around the van that you'll basically need because vans come equipped with the basic things that you're gonna to need to get by. But just a few additional items make everything so much more comfortable and enjoyable. The first item that nobody tells you about, but I've used every single day without fail, at least once, sometimes twice, is a mat just like this. Make sure you get yourself a plasticky, nylon-y, horrible one. The reason is, it's super convenient, super versatile, and it provides additional floor space wherever you might be. Uh, because you're gonna end up in lots of places that you're unexpected, and it's well worth having that extra space because it gets quite cramped in there, and you do need to spill out sometimes. Perfect for the beach, because with a quick shake, all the sand comes off. Sometimes you might just have, if it's wet sand, just leave it out in the sun for two minutes, then shake it off once the sand's dry but it stops all the sand getting in there, which, trust me, you really don't want. Also, as I mentioned, it doubles up as floor space. So, as long as the wind doesn't blow it away, if you're prepping food inside or outside the van, it just provides a white, clean surface that uh, allows you to spill out up to outside and take up a bit more space. Um, make sure you get yourself a plastic one. It sounds horrible, but it's way better than a beach towel or a bamboo mat or anything like that. That one costs 12 quid from Aldi, do yourself a favour, get one of these, it rolls up really small and it's the best investment I've made the whole trip. Do it! Now, vans come equipped with some way of keeping stuff cool. Food, drink, sort of stuff you need. And it's normally a cool box, the sort of thing that you might take on a one day picnic to the park. Not really suitable or cut out for a 16 day adventure up the east coast of Australia. If you've got a bit of money and you're taking a bigger RV then you're probably alright, they'll come with a powered fridge. This thing, it's like a converted people carrier, so that's all it's got. It's just got a cool box. And the second tip is something that's gonna have a massive impact on your experience. Um, if you do nothing else, please, 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 get yourself one of these little chaps. It's a Thermos water cooler, uh, and it keeps your water cold rather than warm like tea, just without the flavor. Because if you're in 35 degree heat, you need cold refreshment. It's not nice having driven for a couple of hours and thinking, oh, I need a bit of water, picking up a plastic bottle that's been stewing in the hot, hot sun here for the best part of three or four hours and having a sip from something warm. It's just not nice. So grab one of these. This came from a, um, like a camping store. Uh, there's loads of them about. There's like fishing and all kinds of stuff is big here. So um, it's just a store on the side of the road. You'll find one. If you ask at a petrol station, they'll let you know. Fill it with ice from a petrol station. They cost about four dollars for a five kilo bag it's well worth it it will keep five liters of water cool for a day maybe two depending on how many people and how much you're drinking and uh, it's probably better for the environment and your health so environment wise you're not throwing away a load of plastic bottles which is a bad thing as we know and for your health i've heard and i don't know if this is 100 percent true but i've heard that if plastic water bottles get hot in the sun like they do in this van they start to slowly decompose and release bits of plastic into the water. When you drink it, you don't really want it in your system. So do yourself a favor, get one of these, stay cool, stay hydrated, and everyone's gonna enjoy life a lot more. Number three, 
please, 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 please make sure you get yourself some super high factor sunblock or sun protection, sunscreen, whatever. Um, if you're visiting Australia, the sun here is different, all right? No matter if you live in a hot climate or you're really brown or whatever, I don't care. There's a hole in the ozone layer. The UV rays are super, super strong. They even have different grading for their SPF. So their factor 30 is stronger than a European factor 30, for example. Um, there's no shame in sticking on a factor 50. Um, it's the thing to do. Everybody here does it as a matter of uh, like habit. Um, don't get burnt. It's not big, it's not clever, um, and you're just not going to have a good time stuck in a hot van, like rolling around, not being comfortable when you're trying to sleep. So, um, yeah, it even comes in like a, a spray form now, an aerosol, makes takes all the kind of greasy stickiness out, um, out of applying it. There's some really good stuff out there on the market, and it's just a sensible thing to do. So, high SPF, do it. Let me explain number four a little bit because you're probably thinking, why on earth would I need an umbrella in Australia? Well, not for wind purposes, that's for sure. But <clears throat> it's pretty hot and sunny, right? And sometimes you're just going to need a bit of shade, be that on the beach in the hot of the sun or walking down the street because you need to go and get a coffee or a bite to eat or whatever that might be. Second diet on the agenda is to do with rain. That's the surprising bit. In Queensland, which is where we are now, it's pretty close to the tropics and we've just experienced three days of pretty much non-stop downpour in a torrential fashion. Um, I think it is to do with El Nino, but in the tropics you can imagine when it rains, it really rains. And if you're camping, you need to go for a wee or you need to go and pick something up that's not in the van, you really, really, really don't want to be getting wet. Being damp and nasty is just not nice in the van. So, little compact umbrella, it won't cost you much, you've probably got one at home, stick it in your bag, bring it with you, and it will just make things a little bit nicer. Item number six is this chap. It is a cigarette to USB adapter, and it's a lifesaver. All you do when you're driving along, stick this in your cigarette lighter, and you've got a USB charge point. Great for phones, speakers, battery packs, whatever it might be. Um, I think, I'm not sure, but I think if you need like a socket, you can also get those adapters. Um, we found that the power that comes out of this isn't particularly strong, so it takes quite a long time to charge. Um, but anyway, if you need a bit of power, it's a great little place. So you've probably even got one at home, but pack one in your bag, pick one up for next to nothing on Amazon or somewhere like that, and you'll have enough power to, uh, to, to get by. Now, the cigarette lighter only works when the engine's on or when you're driving along. So for when you're parked up at night or at lunchtime, you might wanna get yourself one of these. This is a battery pack, and most people have them nowadays actually for smartphones because their batteries don't last very long. I've got myself a fairly decent one. This one's by Rav Power, and this will last you probably about eight or nine smartphone charges. I've got an iPhone 6. Um, it charges that eight or nine times on a full, full go. Um, and it really helps when you just need to get a bit of power here and there or maybe overnight a lot of people charge their phones overnight um, this is a great thing to have with you and keep it charged up so if you're gonna stop at a hotel or a motel or a um, holiday inn uh, then you can charge this up with the power and uh, and get going um, you can also charge it by USB, so it does work in conjunction with the uh, USB um, adapter in the cigarette lighter. Um, it does just take a bit longer, so if you've got a long drive, maybe you want to plug this in with your phone, because um, you'll get more out of it. So, battery pack, bring one of those along if you're not already. The other thing related to that that I didn't get, but I kind of wish I had done, was a you can get solar panels, like small solar panels that fold up and give you USB power uh, from the sun, and there's not a lot more sun than in this place. Uh, Australia, the sun beats down for a long time during the day, and if you're parked up for lunch, or some people even leave them on the, um, the parcel shelf of their van or their car, picking up rays while they're driving, you can't get much more free energy than that. It's not that expensive, I think, um, I can't remember the exact price, but it's not even £100, it's less than £100. So, um, if I was to do it again, I probably would get one of those, but uh, the battery pack has lasted us all right um, so far. Um, yeah, so if you want to get a solar panel, then by all means do it. I don't think you go wrong. 
Next item, it goes without saying, it's a bit of a no-brainer, you're probably going to want a plug adapter. Um, the only reason I'm mentioning it, because, it, uh, I mean, you're going to bring one, aren't you, right? This one's just particularly good because it does different country into different country um, and you just unplug one bit into the other. So this one does little things like that. You've got all different types of plugs that go in there and there and there and it fits together really neatly. So I'll link it down below and if you're going to get one, get this because it can go anywhere in the world with you. Do it. Final item on technology is one for entertainment, all right? You're going to be on some long journeys. So um, what you want is a simple item and it's an auxiliary to an auxiliary cable, all right? What all this does is it plugs into the aux output of your hi-fi and into, if you're old like me, uh, an iPod or potentially an iPhone and it gives you your music through the speakers and you don't have to put up with the adverts on the radio or anything like that. Cost next to nothing. If you don't have one already, bring it along with you if you do. Next section is all about comfort and staying comfortable in the van is something that you're going to want to do. Uh, if, you sp if you're staying any longer than a week, it's the sort of thing that you want to get right. And first item is an eye mask. This one's particularly good because it's nice and soft and covers all of your face. But whilst there are curtains here, as you can see, little bits of sunlight do come in in the morning. So if you're a light sleeper and light sensitive, then get one of these. Second item probably comes in the aeroplane with you anyway in the comfort pack, but earplugs they take the edge off the sound sometimes a car might go past or one morning there were parrot squawking having a conversation that uh, that were quite noisy these little things well worth packing with you and then in the event that you do find there are mosquitoes we haven't really found any we've actually slept with the roof open most nights which is wonderful um, but insect repellents and this stuff is fantastic stingos i think it's called we found it in a pharmacy here and it just helps take the edge off the bite if you do get bitten and calms and soothes the uh, the itching so insect repellent and bite spray well worth having next category of stuff is all about cleanliness now unless you're going to get a big rv then chances are you're not going to have running water or a shower um so how do you get clean 16 days on the road am i a complete hobo and stinking no and one of the biggest things I've got to thank are the public facilities in Australia. The place is fully, fully hooked up for doing stuff like this and living out of a van or camping. At almost every beach location I've been to, there's been fantastic free facilities. Toilets, hot running water or cool running water at least, um, showers with cubicles, sometimes outdoors if not. Sometimes there's even swimming pools and, you know, with full on sort of lifeguard stuff going on. There's all also often free barbecue areas um, and sort of running water to wash your plates and knives and stuff so um, the place is properly hooked up for looking after people in an outdoors lifestyle um, if you're going to have a shower there or even use the sea or whatever one of these things is absolutely brilliant it's like a microfiber um, towel that dries super super quickly you can get them in all different colors i've got an orange one here got a blue one here um, brilliant brilliant thing they roll up into some into a really small tight space but they dry so so quickly so once i've had a shower all i do is hang it up somewhere in the wind and the sun and it's dry within sort of the five ten minutes it takes me to finish off sorting out and putting stuff away so a microfiber towel or two are a really good thing to have next item is hand sanitizer so hand sanitizer people know and probably use quite a lot of but you know there are times when you might not be able to wash your hands properly. It just stops bacteria spreading. And when you're on holiday, you don't really want to get ill. So hand sanitizer is the next thing. In conjunction with that is soap. So you can just pick this up from a supermarket when you're here. Um, there's a little pump action um, sink here that just runs off a jerry can in the compartment here. Um, it's great just to wash your hands sometimes after you've had a meal or before you're going to eat a meal. Um, also, the, the public facilities on the beaches sometimes don't have soap, so it's good to have some with you just in case. Clothes are the next item. So how do you keep your clothes clean? Obviously, you can go to a laundromat, but this has been a really nice thing to have. It's a just, you know, a, a laundry bag, but it packs down into this tiny little bag that's attached to it. So if you're not using it, it it's really small, but it takes about a load and a half's worth of washing, um, which is more than enough. and the benefit is it just keeps all your dirty, nasty, wet, sometimes clothes away from all your nice free one, free clean ones um, and gives you something you can go to the laundry, laundry with. So get one of those, they're not expensive. And then the other thing, when you've done the laundry, is how do you dry it? 
you can use you can pay for the tumble dryers which are quite good but the weather here is great like sun wind and I've just got one of these things like it's a suction cap washing line that you can just put between you know any sort of uh, shiny area be it a window of your van to another another window of a car or a, you know a wall of something um, and these, suck these suckers are great. I didn't trust them when I bought them, but they are brilliant. They'll take a, a load of washing, no problem at all. You'll need two of these lines if you're gonna do a full wash though. So that was one error that, uh, that or one discovery maybe. Um, get two, it does a full wash. And because we've been laying stuff over, you know, the headrest or things like that to, uh, to finish off the load. So this is a really good thing. And it packs down just as small as the washing bag, really, next to nothing. So that's how you stay clean. There you have it. That's pretty much it of things that you can buy. The, the last group is, they're not things you can buy, it's just tips that I've got that are really useful. The, the first one is to do with planning your food. Now, if you're a foodie or not, it doesn't matter. The reality is, the facilities here are pretty basic. You've got a gas ring, you've got a cool box, which doesn't really work that well, and a pump action sink for washing your hands and washing up. Um, to avoid the mad panic when you get to the supermarket for the first time thinking, ah, what am I going to make? What do I need to buy? How are we going to survive? Just spend a few minutes before you come thinking about the sorts of things that realistically you can make in this environment. I'm talking one pot wonders, salads, sandwiches, pasta and sauce. Those are the kinds of things that don't require an awful lot of thinking, an awful lot of time, and you don't also have to buy lots and lots of ingredients, particularly fresh ones that might perish over the course of a couple of days. On that note, make sure that you uh, don't panic buy and buy loads and loads of stuff on the first day. Just buy enough to get you through the first couple of days and then just do like a rolling top up shop each, uh, every other day. It saves loads of space in the cool box and avoids anything going off and going to waste. So plan your food. Second one is about budgeting for fuel. Stupidly, I didn't do that. Thankfully, the cost of fuel is about two thirds that, uh, that that is in the UK. The cost we've been paying is between $1.30 and $1.40, um, which is about, yeah, as I said, two thirds cheaper than the UK, which is great. The issue is that Kylie old girl, the van that we've got uh, and affectionately named, has done over half a million kilometers. So she's not the most fuel efficient um, in the world, but if you drive sensibly, don't accelerate too hard, make sure the tires are pumped up. Um, if you can avoid using air conditioning for the whole day, do so. In the middle of the day, you're probably gonna want it because it's baking hot, but in the morning and the afternoon, just avoid it. Uh, use the windows instead, that's great. Um, and don't drive completely at the speed limit. You're not Lewis Hamilton or Michael Schumacher and you're not in a rush. If you can save yourself five or 10 kilometers under the speed limit, it makes the fuel go further. Um, Penultimate one is about PayWave toll registration. That is basically a, a number plate recognition system that means you avoid uh, paying fines or toll, on toll roads. It will come up when you rent your van. Just don't, th the reason I'm telling you is so you don't think that they're ripping you off or anything. Register online, it's linked to your card, it's all good. And then the final one is, um, it's basically saying, well, if I, was, if I was to do this again, what things would I have thought of earlier? If you're looking for power or Wi-Fi, linking back to that point about technology, I was looking in cafes, and here it's a bit weird. You get power or Wi-Fi, rarely both. Then I had that moment, I was like, oh, man, why didn't I think of that before? Libraries, tourist information, places of public um, use tend to have both, and they're air-conditioned, and you don't have to buy a coffee. What's not to love? Um, and there you have it, that's it, that's everything. I'll link the things that you can buy if you want to down below so you can do a bit more research. Um, all that's left to say is if you liked it, if it was useful, give it a thumbs up. If you want more, subscribe and hit the bell next to it so you get alerted. If you've got points to make or comments or other, other tips to add in, write them in the comments. That'll be really interesting to hear. Um, and happy camping. Enjoy yourselves, guys. You won't regret it. It's brilliant.